So we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Marisol Cortez. I work with Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, and I, um, I think of myself as a community scholar, uh, as a liberation sociologist. Um, so I'm, I'm trained uh, as an academic in uh, understanding power relations within contemporary uh, modernity um, in modern society. Um, and I apply my training uh, with Esperanza doing community organizing and, and, and trying to create uh, spaces for uh, people to be able to um, really generate analyses of the situations that they're living so that they can organize more effectively and transform the conditions that they're wanting to understand. Um, and so for this event, which we, we call the People's Luncheon for Real Solutions to Gentrification, what we were wanting to do is to create a moment where um, we can have a discussion that's truly public uh, about gentrification that is in fact led by um, folks who are, who are living those, those forces in their neighborhoods and in their everyday lives. Um, we wanted to bring together people who are most burdened by the city's approach to downtown redevelopment and people who are uh, in office or uh, representing those in office who are looking for sort of concrete ways of responding to those burdens um, so as to prevent them um, or to address them. Um, just so that we can start off on the same page, um, I, if anybody wants to give a definition of gentrification, that'd probably be a good place to start. Um, what do you understand as, as, as that definition? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Don't be shy. I feel like I'm teaching a lecture class again. <laughs> what is gentrification? So displacement is a really key um, element of the definition, and that's, I think, why a lot of folks are, are coming to the space to share their experiences. Um, I think the other really important piece of that is that it's, um, it's pushed by you know, these big picture economic, historical, social forces, right? So it's a transformation of urban spaces in, in ways in which you know, the forces of producing profit from real estate, uh, trying to get a good investment um, or return for investment, uh, you know, those forces are, are transforming urban space in such a way that they're, they're recreating them for the desires um, and, and the, the interests of, of folks with more money, right? And so those are the forces that are effectively like pushing people out, or even if they're not directly pushing people out, making them feel that the neighborhoods that they call home are no longer sort of for them. Um, so there's a loss of place, if not outright displacement you know, or physical relocation. Um, so in organizing this conversation about gentrification, what we were wanting to, we were wanting to respond to a few different things. Um, most kind of urgently and immediately, the, the horrible situation that we've seen at Mission Trails uh, and that those folks have been put into by all of those different forces at work that, that you are alluding to. Um, you know, by the park owners, by the developer of white county builders, but, but also by local government that has no kind of long-term policy solutions to those forces. Uh, and so it either has no way to prevent them from happening uh, and no effective way to really respond when, when, we, when a situation like that does arise. So we're kind of, we're wanting to respond to this moment in time when it's more apparent than ever that we really need those kinds of solutions on the policy level. Um, the second thing we wanted to respond to, though, was something that, um, that Mayor Castro has called for recently, um, kind of in the wake of the Mission Trail situation, which was that we really need uh, a task force on affordable housing. Um, and we need a process of beginning to draft and to think long term um, about policy solutions to um, gentrification and displacement. Um, but then the third thing is that we're also responding to signs that we see that, uh, that these conversations about problems and solutions um, 
are going to be led by the same forces that are creating problematic forms of development to begin with. So, um, as a lot of you may know, uh, there's a luncheon happening after this one, um, hosted by Centro San Antonio, which is, the registration fee is $75, um, or $90 today, if you didn't get the early bird prices. Um, and so, there's a kind of terrible irony that we're seeing of, you know, the folks who are defining what, de what development is and defining what kinds of investment and where and who gets impacted are the same people that then get to say what the solutions are and that's really problematic and so we need to create alternative spaces where we get to, as the communities that are most impacted, develop our own analysis which we can then share with people in policy making capacities um, so that we can identify the solutions um, based on our experiences, right? So, so we wanted to create that kind of alternative that would be truly free, truly open to the public, um, and, and create that space for the people who are most impacted to, to share what they're experiencing and also to, to define the solutions. Um, and then there'll also be a, a chance for the folks who have attended from, um, who are representing uh, state offices, city offices to kind of give their responses about, you know, based on the testimony that we share with you, kind of what are your thoughts about potential solutions. Um, so what we're going to do today, um, I'll just quickly go over the agenda. Um, we'll spend about 15, 20 minutes kind of talking about some of the big picture forces at work and we've invited uh, three scholars from local universities and one um, community worker, community health worker from Metro Health to uh, share kind of the historical and the sociological and the public health, um, you know, point of view about all of these, what's, what's behind all of these forces that we're feeling in our neighborhoods. Um, so, and then after that we'll move to um, hearing testimony from different residents. So there's, there's, there's folks here from different communities around the city that have all been impacted in different ways uh, by downtown redevelopment. And so that's a chance for them to really say what's going on in their neighborhoods and what they're observing. Um, and then we'll wrap up at the end uh, with just kind of having a more informal exchange about solutions. And uh, like I mentioned, at any, we're not necessarily going to break for lunch, so at any point, if you want food, please feel free to, uh, to, to uh, just grab some uh, back there. Um, so, it's free! <laughs> so you should take as much as you can, actually. Take it all away. Um, does that sound okay? Okay. And if we need to, if the setup is, is not conducive to conversation, we can at any moment kind of adjust our chairs and turn towards each other. But uh, so the first, the first kind of thing that we wanted to, to do is um, to get a little bit of uh, insight from folks who study city politics, either historically or sociologically, uh, or in terms of public health, um, and just kind of answer the question, you know, what is at root, what is the root cause of these things that we're experiencing uh, in our neighborhoods in the form of gentrification? So, um, so we've invited uh, Christine Drennan, Dr. Christine Drennan from Urban Studies at Trinity, um, Haywood Sanders, who's with the Public Policy Department at UTSA, and Meredith McGuire uh, from Sociology at Trinity, who I think more specifically do like medical sociology, correct? And then uh, Huni Vega, who's with Metro Health and uh, who coordinates the uh, community health promotora program there. So what would be the best way that y'all could maybe, do you want to come up here? Do you want to have us turn towards you? Um, say what? Okay, so then if we can just, uh, I'll invite Christine first just to kind of, um, the big question that I want to throw out at the four of you, and maybe just take about five minutes, you know, do your, <laughs> do your best in uh, five minutes to address this really uh, complicated question, but um, when we look at some of the struggles around gentrification that have emerged as the city has pursued downtown redevelopment, what do you see as the root of these struggles? So what, what connects the dots, right, between Mission Trails, K Street Bridge, demolition of Univision, and other struggles around land and housing. 